Every hour in Nigeria, one woman dies of cervical cancer. That's approximately 24 women per day. Now, it's important to know that this is a cervical, a type of cancer that can actually be prevented if you take proper precaution, looking after yourself, doing the regular tests, and getting vaccination. Today, we have the founder and editor-in-chief of Exquisite Magazine, the conveners of the EMERC Walk, and every year they put together awareness and free screenings for young women and old women just so that they can prevent and reduce the incidences of cervical cancer. Joining us today on the show is Stewa Onosanya. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all that you do. We don't have thank enough you. information with regards to cervical cancer. No. We hear that in other parts of the world, in the UK, for example, there's more information with regards to cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. But here in Nigeria, there isn't so much. Now, since you started this, when did you start the cervical cancer? We war? started this in 2010. Has actually. the awareness increased yet? Has any other um, person joined you in doing what you do? Yes, there are quite a number of organizations that have joined in, but I feel like the impact is still not enough because, you know, a lot of us are doing all those things. I still feel like it's a little drop in the ocean because there are, well, there are almost 200 million people and major in Nigeria, majority of them are women. And we still have the, you know, the WHO figures of one hour, one woman every hour, and it's not going down. So I'm thinking to myself, yes, we're doing our bit, but people are still not doing what they're supposed to be doing in terms of getting themselves screened. All and right. people don't even know about it, actually. Okay, so now let's enlighten people for people who don't yeah. know what cervical cancer is what okay. is cervical cancer so cervical cancer is the cancer of the cervix and the cervix is um described as the neck of the womb so if i you know so to demonstrate this is like the womb so to speak and then the neck of the womb that is the cervix so when um you're when you know during intimacy and things like that the cervix is where you know the whole thing actually hits, so to speak. I don't know how to say it without sounding too yeah, explicit well on enough. air. <laughs> yeah. So during intercourse, the neck of the cervix is where the, you know, the... In, the genitals. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the genitals hit yeah. during intercourse. And obviously, you know, when, if there's um, cement um, expunged or whatever it is, then it goes through into the, the womb. But um, a lot of people don't even know that the cervical cancer um, virus, which is the HPV virus, is carried by men. So people who are sexually active, they're not going for their tests, they're not even getting, and before, um, before you become sexually active, they're not getting vaccinated. And we have cases that are going unnoticed and on, um, on, on, unnoticed till it becomes cancer. And like you rightly said, I don't know, I heard you say something earlier, that cervical cancer is one of the preventable cancers. And the reason we say it's preventable is because it's one of the few, if not the only cancer, that has a pre-cancer stage before it becomes full-blown cancer. And... The HPV virus requires an incubation period of five to 10 years. So if women are going for their screening regularly and if something is seen, between the, those five to 10 years, it would be detected and they can be treated. And it doesn't have to be, you know, full bone cancer. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to become a statistics. But that is not happening, which is why, you know, because the magazine is focused on women, I'm a woman, we decided, you know, let's take this upon ourselves. A lot of people talk about breast cancer. Even the cases of breast cancer is still high. But then again, you know, at least a lot of people know about it. A lot of people don't know about cervical cancer. Okay, so now how regularly should one get tested for cervical cancer? How okay. regularly should they get checked? The screening. So depending on what test they do, some of them is every year. Like the ones we do, people have to get tested every single year. We use the visual inspection method um, using acetic acid. Those are, that method is like the easiest method ever. It's, um, you know, they put a liquid into the cervix. I mean, yes, it's a bit uncomfortable. All the tests are a little bit uncomfortable. But um, I say that what is a little bit of dis a five minute discomfort for a lifetime of, um, of, um, of health so um, there's that method, which you have to do every single year. There's another method, which is the pap smear or the cytology. With those ones, you can have a leeway of about three years. And then with the cytology one, I think it's about two or three years as well. But then again, whichever one you do, you have to speak to your, um, to your doctor or your practice nurse about it. So they would give you more information about, okay, this is the test we're doing, and you need to come at a certain period every single year. And it's not just the screening as well. If ladies are not sexually active yet, yay, all good. Children, girls from the age of nine, even better, can get vaccinated. 
What we're advocating for is that we're advocating for preventative methods. Go and get screened. Go and get the vaccine. At least let's save the next generation from cervical cancer. One less cancer to worry about. Okay, so when one does the screening, maybe the hit, the pap smear yeah. or the acid-based one you yeah, just talked about. Once mm -hmm. they do that, do they also have to do like a blood test? Because I remember blood. when I was okay. going to do my, um, I was going to check for HPV, yeah. they had to draw HPV. my blood. Yes. And I know with pap mm -hmm. smear, it involves the genitals. Yeah. Do the other ones involve the genitals as yes, well? Yes, the VIA as well. So do you have Whatever to do that is, and then take the one that the HPV so screening one? The HPV screening is an additional test you can do, which is good anyway, because with the HPV screening, they get to, you know, draw blood and then see what, you know, HPV levels that are in that person. The, like I said, the virus that causes cervical cancer is HPV virus. And there's some other cancers that are caused by HPV virus. So if the HPV virus, um, the blood is drawn to detect, the, to, to detect HPV, I guess it's a plus for okay. that person. Okay. But you don't, you know, it's not, a, it's not a case of, oh, because they found HPV, you have cervical cancer. All right, hold our thoughts. We're going on a very quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking some more into this. How long should this vaccine last for? How many doses should one take? And are there lifestyle habits that can predispose one to, you know, contracting these diseases? These and more, we'll still be speaking with Tewa Onosanya right after this break. Hello, this is the Hello Nigeria show. Hello Nigeria show. Don't you dare touch the dial. Hello, Nigeria. Hello, Nigeria, yeah, sure. Don't you dare touch the dial. Don't you dare touch the dial. Cause it's Hello, Nigeria. Hello, Nigeria. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're still looking at prevention and protection of yourself from cervical cancer. Let's look at, you know, the vaccine. How long should one take the vaccine? I hear that they're in doses and yes. over a period of years. No, it's not over a period of years. It's months, actually. Okay. There are doses. So if children from the age of nine take the, do take the vaccine or um, older people that are not, never been sexually active, you can take, um, okay, so children need two doses from about age nine to 13. And once they're 13 and above, they need three doses. So with the children, they can take one dose and then six months later, take the second dose. But if you are sexually active, you would need three doses. And even if you're not sexually active, you will need three doses. And those doses are taken the first, so you take one, and then the second one is taken a month later, and then the third one is taken six months later. So you need three doses. The good thing about a woman that is not sexually active and has taken the vaccine is that she doesn't have to do screening, and she doesn't have to worry about cervical cancer or any HPV-causing virus. Okay, so yeah. the, the cervical cancer screening is for only those who are sexually active, only women that yes, are sexually active. Yes, only women who are sexually active because the HPV virus is carried by men. So you've, if you've never had sexual relations in your life, you're good. But once you have, then you need to be checked because you don't know if the man you, you, know, you mated with is carrying a strain that doesn't necessarily agree with your body. So if you're sexually active and you've taken the vaccine, you still need to go and get screened. Reason being, I said earlier, um, HPV virus has an incubation period of five to ten years, so we don't know if anything's going to happen, you know, within those years. Hence, you need to still get screened. All right, how can people join in creating cervical cancer awareness? Because I know that um, you've mentioned as well, it doesn't get yeah. as much publicity as no, the other forms of cancer. Mm -hmm. We're hearing a lot about breast cancer, mm. and it's still not, you know, it's still not as absorbed as it should be, but yes. that's the most popular uh -huh. cancer that has gotten Everybody awareness in Nigeria. But mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of that. So how can individuals join in spreading this message? Um, individuals can join by basically talking about it. I mean, I started, we started, you know, um, raising awareness for cervical cancer because I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. I said to her that I was going away and I'm going to do my pap smear. Oh, I'm due. And she's like, what is that? I'm like, what do you mean, what is that? Don't you do pap smears here? And she's like, no, I've never done it. And she's, you know, obviously she's had children and things. And I'm just like, uh, how is that possible? She's like, what, what are you talking about? I'm like, for cervical cancer, she didn't know what I was talking about. So the awareness is zero. 
you know, yes, we're doing our bit, but it's zero. But if we're talking about it, we're having a girly conversation, we're talking about it, we're talking about it with the men as well, so they can tell the women in their life, their mothers, their sisters, whoever they are. And, you know, just by spreading the word, we say that, um, you know, teal, teal is the color for cervical cancer, and we're always saying, tell every awesome lady you know about cervical cancer. And other ways, they can join our campaign. We started, so we started the walk in 2010. We started a campaign called the Smear It. I have a bracelet here for you, by the oh. way. <laughs> Thank you. We started a walk called the, um, we started a campaign called the Smear It. I'm wearing the bracelet as well. And Smear It basically is a smear test. So we're saying, so what we're looking for a fun way to depict the smear test and just make it fun for people to, you know, latch onto and then do as well. So the smear it campaign is by smearing your lipstick on your face and then taking a selfie, put it on Instagram, challenge other people to do the same. So you can do all sorts of things, but the big thing is communicating about it, talking about it, you know, and then joining our walk. All right. <laughs> we have an event coming up, so you know, people can join that as well, be a part of it, and then you know, get people to go and get screened. Just be your sister's key. So we'll come to talk about the work shortly, but yeah. I'll just quickly explain that if you want to be a part of the Smearage campaign, all you need to do is smear your lipstick on your face. And this campaign is for men and women. Yes, so. Smear it on your face, <laughs> take a picture, post on Instagram, let people get to ask you, why did you smear why your you lipstick? And then you explain to them, I'm smearing it because we're trying to create cervical cancer awareness. Yep. Each one should reach one. You would yes. spread the message more if yes. everybody could talk about cervical cancer mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. Now there's a work coming on. Yes. And usually every year when you have walks you always have free screenings <laughs> yes we are there do. free screenings this year? there are free screenings in fact this time we have a partnership and we're doing 1,000 women. Wow. By the special grace of God. That's amazing. And then we're not doing just Lagos. We're doing Lagos, we're doing Ibadan, we're doing Ijebude as well. Okay. So on Saturday, which is the 1st of September, we're doing another smear it walk. So we'll be doing like a five kilometer walk um, from Muru Kunula Park around there. And um, we will be screening all day. We call the free screening day a smarathon. <laughs> you know, like when you go on a marathon, yes. which is like a long run. So this is a smarathon all day on Saturday, the 1st of September, come for your free screening. Right. And the good thing about the free screening we do is every year we send you a reminder as well. So, you know, even if we're not doing a screening in your area, we would remind you that, okay, you did a screening last year, you're due for another screening. All right, so where's this, where's this happening? This is happening at Muriel Konla Park. Um, in VI, we're walking on the 1st of September, which is on Saturday, which is a few days away. Um, and then we're going to be walking around there. And the free screening is free screening is going to start from 9 a.m. And we're going to round off about at about 4, p 4 p.m. So and those like who a, want to be a part of the walk should come at 7 a.m. Should a. come at 7 a.m., yes. And if you, um, so at the walk, we're going to be um, giving out T-shirts. We're going to have the smeary bracelets as well. And if you don't want to wear a T-shirt, you can come in your white T-shirt. The aim is for us to be able to reach as many people as possible. So yes, register and attend. All right. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. Now, for those who have more questions, comments, and feedback, yeah. how can they follow you on social media? They can follow my personal page, which is at Tewa Onosonya. Or you can get all the information you need, advice, whatever it is, even if you send us a DM. at um, Our Instagram handle is at IMAC, E-M-A underscore cervical cancer prevention. I know it's long, but hey, at IMAC underscore cervical cancer prevention. And we'll give you all the details you would need and even refer you as well. Okay, so now if yeah. you know that anybody who needs to, who is of age, anyone who's sexually active, please contact them, your friends, your sisters, your partners, your wives, your aunties. This is a time for them to reach out to IMAC. You know, follow them on Instagram at IMAC underscore cervical cancer prevention. Or you can follow Tewa personally at Tewa Onosonya for all questions and feedback. Thank you so yeah. much for joining. Us. Thank you. And thank you for the amazing thing. Can I have my bracelet? Yes, now? yes, yes. You can have your bracelet. Yay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, welcome. so we're for the news. Oops, I'm already wearing it. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.